The arid landscapes of northwest Nigeria have become a breeding ground for terror. The harsh, unforgiving environment has always posed challenges, but now it harbors a new and more sinister threat. A once peaceful group of herders, known as Lakurawa, have transformed into a dangerous force. These herders, who once roamed the land with their livestock, living in harmony with nature, are now unrecognizable. Their evolution from shepherds to terrorists is a complex and chilling tale. How did this happen? What drove these men to abandon their pastoral ways and take up arms? The answers lie in a web of socio-economic and environmental factors. How did a group entrusted with the care of livestock become harbingers of fear and violence? The transformation was gradual, fueled by desperation and a lack of opportunities. As resources dwindled and conflicts over land and water intensified, the Lakarawa found themselves pushed to the brink. The story of Lakarawa is a stark reminder of how easily peace can crumble. It shows how quickly a community can descend into chaos when the delicate balance of their existence is disrupted. It highlights the fragility of security in a region grappling with poverty, climate change and ethnic tensions. These issues have created a perfect storm, making it nearly impossible for the herders to sustain their traditional way of life. But most importantly, it forces us to ask, how did we fail to see the warning signs? And what can we do to stop this from happening again? The story of the Lakarawa is not just a tale of transformation, it is a call to action. We must address the root causes of their plight to prevent further descent into violence. The Lakarawa were not always a threat. They first appeared in Sokoto State as many pastoralist groups do, seeking greener pastures. Their arrival was initially welcomed by local communities. These communities, often vulnerable to banditry, saw the Lakarawa as potential allies. The Lakarawa, with their knowledge of the terrain and their armed presence, seemed like a solution to a pressing problem. They were seen as protectors, their presence a deterrent against armed gangs terrorizing the region. But was this initial trust misplaced? Why were the locals so quick to embrace a group of outsiders? The people of Sokoto were desperate. Banditry had plagued the region for years, leaving communities vulnerable and afraid. The Lakarawa, with their weapons and their willingness to confront these criminal gangs, offered a glimmer of hope. This initial cooperation created a sense of trust, albeit a fragile one. The Lakarawa were given access to grazing lands and markets. They integrated into the social fabric of the community. But this seemingly symbiotic relationship was about to take a dark turn. What was the turning point? When did this fragile peace begin to unravel? The transformation of the Lakarawa was not sudden, but rather a gradual descent into criminality. As their numbers grew, so did their influence and their audacity. They began to impose their own rules, exploiting local resources and intimidating communities. Their ideology, once focused on self-preservation and the protection of their herds, became increasingly radicalized. They began to espouse extremist beliefs, drawing parallels between their struggles and those of other militant groups operating in the region. How did this shift in behavior impact the local communities and the overall security situation in Sokoto? Section 5. The Devastation Unfolds Lakarawa's Reign of Terror The Lakarawa's Reign of Terror began with extortion and intimidation. They imposed taxes on local farmers, demanding payment for protection against threats they themselves created. Those who resisted faced brutal consequences. Villages were raided, homes were torched, and innocent lives were lost. The once peaceful herders had transformed into the very monsters they were brought in to fight. The security situation in Sokoto deteriorated rapidly. 
But where was the government in all of this? How did the Nigerian authorities respond to this escalating crisis? Section 6, A Nation's Struggle, Nigeria's Response to Lakarawa. The Nigerian government, already grappling with multiple security challenges, seemed ill-prepared for the Lakarawa threat. Initial responses were slow and inadequate, marked by a lack of coordination and a failure to grasp the gravity of the situation. While military operations were eventually launched, they were often hampered by logistical challenges, corruption, and a lack of understanding of the local terrain. The Lakarawa, familiar with the environment and skilled in guerrilla warfare, exploited these weaknesses. What are the broader implications of this for Nigeria and the entire region? Section 7, Beyond Borders, the regional implications of Lakarawa's terror. The crisis in Lakarawa has far-reaching consequences that extend well beyond Nigeria's borders. The Lakarawa crisis is not just a Nigerian problem, it has become a significant issue for the entire West African region, affecting multiple countries and their stability. Their activities have spilled over into neighboring countries, destabilizing the entire region. This spread of violence has led to increased militant activity in places like Niger, Chad, and Cameroon, creating a ripple effect of instability. The porous borders of West Africa allow for the easy movement of militants, weapons, and illicit goods. These borders, often inadequately monitored, facilitate the spread of terror and illegal activities, making it difficult for any single nation to combat the threat alone. This interconnectedness has regional and international implications. The global community cannot ignore the crisis as it affects international relations and global security. The Lakarawa have been linked to other terrorist organizations operating in the Sahel, raising concerns about the group's evolving ideology and its potential to launch larger scale attacks. These connections suggest a coordinated effort among various militant groups, which could lead to more sophisticated and widespread terror operations. What can be done to stop them? The international community must come together to develop comprehensive strategies. What solutions and strategies can be implemented to counter this growing threat? Collaborative efforts, including intelligence sharing, military cooperation and socio-economic development, are essential to address the root causes of terrorism and to build a more secure and stable region. Section 8. Can we stop them? Solutions and strategies. The fight against Lakarawa requires a multifaceted approach that goes beyond military operations. We need to address the root causes of this crisis, including poverty, climate change, and the lack of opportunity for young people. We need to invest in sustainable development initiatives, promote intercommunal dialogue, and strengthen regional security cooperation. We need to empower local communities, providing them with the resources and support they need to resist Lakarawa's influence. What do you think? What strategies would you prioritize to address this complex crisis? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Section 9. The fight continues. Your voice, your impact. This is a call to action, a reminder that every voice matters in the grand tapestry of global change. The story of Lakarawa is a stark reminder of the challenges we face in an increasingly interconnected world. It highlights the fragility of peace and the ease with which it can be shattered by extremism and conflict. It is a story of desperation, of missed opportunities, and the devastating human cost of unchecked extremism. Families torn apart, communities destroyed, and lives forever altered by the ravages of war. But it is not a story without hope. Amidst the rubble and despair, there are glimmers of resilience and determination. 
people coming together to rebuild, to heal, and to forge a path forward. By understanding the complexities of this crisis, we can begin to address the root causes and work towards sustainable solutions. Knowledge is power, and informed action is the key to change. By engaging in meaningful dialogue, we can bridge divides and foster understanding. Conversations that challenge our perspectives and push us towards collective action. And by demanding action from our leaders, we hold them accountable to the promises they make. We ensure that our voices 